version of the blue charm. Now, the hook I'm using is a kind of Alec Jackson size 5. It's a lovely single and it's got a nice lovely shape that you're looking in or you're always looking for a hook and this has it and the strength as well. Now the thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread 8 in black. Now I'm going to start the thread around about a millimetre from the eye and then I'm going to work my thread down. Now if you'll turn the, th the hook here you'll see the eye is formed by twisting the wire or bending the wire to form the eye and then laid along the side. Now I'm going to bring the thread all the way down to that point. Then I'm going to tie in, remove the waste piece first and then tie in a piece of tinsel, oval tinsel in this case. I'm just going to use the uni and this is the extra small. Good length. I just try and compensate for that step and we catch in the oval tinsel at that point and then take it all the way down the thread turns and catching in the, the tinsel for the tag until well, basically until I'm in line with the point of the hook. Just take your time. That point there. Then I'm going to bring the thread turns up round about enough basically for five turns of the oval tinsel. So one, two, three, four, five. Cross your thread. A nice bend into it, and you'll see the where I've got it. And then what I'm gonna do is basically making sure that's tied in. Now for the tag it's just a small tag. The length is up to yourself really. I'm going to have it round about maybe twice the length of the silver part there. I'm going to make sure this is tied in before I do anything. Relax the thread. Now for the, the floss, I'm just going to use a Piezo's floss. This is what they call the Marabou. And what you do with that is you can take a length off and you can split it. It just opens out and you can split it into two. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to catch it in. The best to probably is catch in the full length of the body so that you don't have all many steps. Both lengths. And one on the top, one on the side. And just work your way down. To right at your silver tinsel and come back up. It's, you could put wind this straight on, but if the problem being eventually what happens, no matter what floss you put on, unless you stick it some way, it's going to get pulled off, so you have to protect that. So I'm just going to check that looks okay. That point there, come across and catch it in with a couple of turns. This is a, the other piece of the floss, just bring it over the back. Now what I like to do is, flatten it so that you don't see it so much, just rub it to the side and that there stops the floss getting drawn or pulled round then I'm going to cut all these lengths so that they're basically in line with the point where I cut in the tinsel now for security and strength I like just to carry one up you can brush these together if you want but keep it don't let it twist round the shank. So what I'm going to do here is just, every so often, I'm just bringing it around with my finger. Making sure it's not doing a kind of like a twist. Which you will see if, if you put on your body. Here we're, all we're doing is we're dressing the fly. So it's obviously going to be durable and last long. And at the same time, to a point where everything's going to be nice and smooth. Now we're back at the point, see where the hook was bent round. Now I'm starting to fill up that space. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie in some oval silver tinsel. This is a small now. The first one was a, an extra small. And I'm just going to come back down. Tying this in. All the way down 
into the tag. Then I've got some gold peasant crest, which has not been prepared in any way. So it's got a twist in it and everything, so I'm going to just offer it to the length that I would like, and the, obviously the tip for the tail. It's just by the bend of the hook, so hold that. And then I catch it with a, well, basically a couple of loose turns. And then I move this in, I pull it to get it to sit the way I want. And that, that looks okay. I'm just going to bring up some of these fibres. There's some that are not going to sit for you, but this is a fishing fly. It's not for show. And I'm going to cut this the full length of the body, which is there. And I move that there. And then I'm going to get myself just some Rio and black floss. Reasonable length. I catch that on the side. Again, the full length of the body. And really nice and tight, work your way up. All the way. You just got to be patient when you're tying these flies. Now you'll see, if I turn this hook, that the, the space is, is partly gone. It's tiny bit there, but I can get rid of that with uh, the floss. And it's just a matter of smoothing out the floss by twisting it, which opens the fibres out. And then working your way up, forming the body. It's nice and tight. Now you can see how tight I'm actually putting the floss on. The way the hook is moving, and this is a strong hook. Now this is where you decide where you want to put a, a false hackle on, or a full hackle. Now if a full hackle I'd have it on there. If I was going to go touch further, put on a false hackle to that point there, put it on there. It's entirely up to self, but I'm going to put a full hackle on, so I'm going to go back to this point here, and then catch that down, and trim away. Now you can see the body is reasonably smooth, it's got a kind of reasonable taper, and that's what you're looking for. Then you bring your rib up through. Now you're looking round about five turns or so. Nice and tight. And across your thread. Now the trick about doing or forming a nice rib body is to keep going, don't stop. I'm just going to trim the tinsel, the whole tinsel, to about maybe a length enough that you can actually grab the end, the end and, and bear it out. This will bear the tinsel and the, the core so that you can tie it in without much bulk and it's much stronger as well. What you're looking for is a, you can use a hen cape, or in this case what I'm going to use is a, it's a Chinese cape dyed blue, it's a Chinese cock cape. Uh, I'm just going to use one of the nicer hackles. We tie it in just as normal. We tie it in by the softer part at the bottom. Bear the stem. And then obviously come down the length of the, the hackle. Now you're looking probably around, depends on how good the hackle really is. About three Four turns, as I say, depends on how good the hackle is and how thick the stem is. Just so doing a turn in front of the other. Just work your way down. Now I'm going to put an extra turn or so in because it's quite thin. That point there. Always folding the fibres back as you go. And then across your thread. Now the stem's thin enough here that I can actually fold this back and then come up and break it off so it's nice and tight. Again, always make sure you retouch your wax at certain points so it gives you the grip. Now we're ready to tie in our wing. Our hackles on, tail, everything else obviously ready. Ready to go. And the uh, fly's looking no too bad. Now we've got a bronze mallard wing here. Uh, basically I've got a right and a left. These are kind of medium to large feathers. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually double up. Now what I mean by that, all I'm going to do is, if you imagine there's the wing. There's a, I'm going to put an under wing on it, so there's the first part. And I'm on my finger. Normally I leave that on my finger, because you do it all at one go. I come in, and I, I take another pinch off. This is like a support to that side. So you've got a double wing. Uh, you're just using the material at the bottom, and that'll be your first part of your wing. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'll show you again, take that off. And basically pull off. So get, try and get them about the same length. Tear that one off, come in, line them up, hold it. Again, tear that off. So that's your double wing. And then what I'm going to do is get the other side. You can put them on individually if you want, or together. Now this is a fishing fly. So all I'm going to do is, if you imagine, there's the four wings together. You can put them, as I say, you can put them on individual. The one supports the other, and I, and I do that as well. But in this smaller fly, that basically I'm going to tie them on the top. Now, bronze marble is not the easiest material to work with. And even I have problems with it, so whatever way this wing is going to work. Now I'm going to come in. Just have to go with it. But you've got to remember it is a fishing fly. I'm making sure as the ends are not going to push away the wing. Get this sitting on the top. And then pinch and loop. It's going to be a bit better than that. Just take your time. Now we've got two or three turns here to start. Now what will happen, the wing will go away from your sail. So I usually bring the tips back up. And hopefully the wing should be sitting. It's a wee bit better. That's okay. And once you're happy, tighten up. You've just got to take it as it comes. And uh, if you end up with a picture perfect fly, then great. But this is what I've ended up with. Now I'm going to tighten up, trim away the waist, tighten up. Now I'm going to add on the sides, which is basically pintail. Which is a, a nice feather that has really well marked fibre and you need a right and a left. Normally used in the classic salmon flies. We've got a, some, a length here which I'm going to, to run along the middle of the wing. Oops, don't drop it. Just place this on. It's a single turn to hold it first. And I'm going to get the other side, looking for the same thickness. So just about right. And then come in, hold it. That looks okay. Again, tighten up. For now, I'm going to make sure to wax my thread, give me all the grip I need. And then trim away the excess. Form a nice head using the thread. And then whip finish. Three or four turns of the whip finish should do it. And there we are. And that's your it's kind of low water low water version of the I'll turn to the other side so you can see what you end up with uh, with the, the pin tail and then I'm going to come in here with so I like to come in with the super glue you mustn't touch the feather just lightly all the way around now that dries extremely quick and form a nice head and once that's dry, put a coat of varnish or two on top, and you shouldn't go far wrong. And there you go. It's, it's a fishing fly first. 
not a display fly. You can see it looks, it looks okay. The, the, the blue charm is always a nice fly to tie. And uh, it's certainly known right around the world. I'm just tied up the underside so you can see it a bit better. And again, see once the, the fly is being fished, uh, you get that lovely shape. And that drops in, in towards the tail. Should run about the top of it. That's fine. And then, as I say, all we have to do is varnish it. I'm going to quickly put some varnish on. Because the super glue dries really quick. You'll see that nice head. And that's your low water blue charm, obviously with a feather ring.